This is a follow-on to my recent video where I described how I made waterproof butt connections in a RV trailer. However, sometimes you need to tie to an existing circuit. For example, if you wanted to add a trailer connector to an existing trailer wiring harness to tow a vehicle behind a motorhome or for double towing with a fifth wheel, you're going to want to make a three-way splice. Unfortunately, there are not as many options when branching a circuit if you want it to be waterproof. There's really only one method I trust, and that is a solder connection with the adhesive heat shrink with the addition of liquid tape or other sealant to obtain a satisfactory seal around the wiring. So the only real difference between this procedure and the one I showed before for a solder connection is the addition of the liquid electrical tape. When you tie into an existing circuit, sometimes called branching a circuit, ensure all the wiring you add has a greater capacity than the fuse or circuit breaker on that circuit, and that you will not be overloading the circuit from any new loads you are adding. The reason that the heat shrink will not maintain a 100% waterproof connection is that the heat shrink is no longer sealing over a round wire but it's sealing over a more or less rectangular wire and as you can see here there is a gap between the wires and water can go into that into the connection so this is not sufficient by itself. However, by adding liquid tape, we can help waterproof that connection there. The procedure is pretty much the same as before as far as a butt connection, where I grab the three wires and then make a good mechanical connection. And this time with a third wire. And then we solder the connection. And then I'll use a piece of paper so that I don't make a mess out of my workbench. And I'm going to start the heat shrink, at least get it on part way. And then what I want to do is I can put some on here, the body, the solder connection, but mostly I want to get that gap between the two wires. Like that. And then when I slide this over, now you can wait for this to cure or you can just heat it up now. And notice that I started from this end and worked my way to the other end because this heat gun will kind of bubble the liquid tape a little bit. But you can see that we now have a good waterproof connection. And this is what I recommend doing. This is how I like to do it. Now there are commercial connectors that you can get. And this is uh, the style that is very popular in the RV industry. Uh, brakes, if you have electric brakes on your trailer, it's likely you have one of these. And this stuff has insulating silicone dielectric in it. And also you can find this style. And this also has silicone dielectric in it. However, when you buy these at, say, the auto store, uh, or some big box stores, unless you specifically get the ones that say they're waterproof, they will not have the dielectric in it, and they are not waterproof, and they are no good for exterior use. Now, both of these are known as IDC, or insulation displacement connectors, and essentially, there is a metal tab that when you insert the wire into the connector, and then you squeeze the tab, the tab pierces the insulation, makes the connection, hence the term insulation displacement. And this is sometimes also called a vampire tap. When it pierces the wire, it can nick it, and it can cut some strands off, so this could be a weak point in the current carrying capability of the connector. But the way these work is you see there's two holes on this side, one hole on this side. 
and unfortunately since there's only one tap you can't put two wires together like this it's got to be a through and through wire so that does make some limitation also you can flip this down and then take the through and through wire and then you can push it in like that then you take the other wire put it in take your pliers squeeze it and then you have to try to close the end again so we'll squeeze it here while we close it cover and there we go that is how these work and with this style uh, this again is used quite a bit in the RV industry and we're going to cut these off so they're the same length and these insert until you hear a clip and then insert the third one and then we squeeze. The problem with these is that we have to have parallel force. So actually they will squeeze better in a vise. So you really need a big set of these pliers because you actually have to put a lot of force on them. And there is a lot of resistance. Now see how this is? That's not going to make a good connection because see it didn't only did one end so I have to do both sides and see this end pops up again and that's what I mean by needing parallel force so these are actually quite difficult to install and finally after three or four squeezes we do have the thing fully seated and while these work you can see the difficulty I had installing this and this where this was pretty straightforward it was easy to do and this could be much more reliable